You're listening to Ants Talk. Our next guest works in a very male-dominated industry. In fact, she's a woman working in a man's world, deck collection. Sonia Falerto works for a Sydney-based company called ACS Debt Collection, where they work to recover debts. We have all seen the American TV show, so I wanted to delve into this world a little deeper and see if my assumptions were right. Hi, Sonia. How are you? Good. How are you, Anthony? I'm very, very well. Thanks so much for coming on as a guest. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Oh, no, my pleasure. My pleasure. So listen, I just want to ask you a few questions, if I may. First off, how did you get into this career? Great question to start with. Um, Look, let me just share that I didn't wake up and want to be a debt collector. Um, That wasn't my school heart dream. Um, To cut a long story short, I basically fell into it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started off as a receptionist and basically worked my way to the top and learned all the basics and everything I needed to know with debt recovery. And um, that's where it all started. And that was uh, 30 years plus. Wow. Wow. But you must love it being that you've fallen into it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I own my own business. So um, yeah, it's definitely a passion. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Um, And what is the main part of your job? The, uh, me personally, or yeah. um, m- uh, me personally, at this stage of my business life, um, I basically source clients, um, you know, new ideas, um, anything that I can do to improve the business, um, our exposure. Um, basically, yeah, that's, well, that's where I'm at, training my team as well, and, um, and just evolving basically sure. uh definitely evolving because um, what about someone that actually is starting sort of in a in a lower position just say with your company what would they what would they work oh okay so the main role with the girls what they do um because uh, we're an all-female team as well yeah so yeah girls, that's yeah, amazing I, yeah that's something that like just i thought you know what i'm going to do it this way because um you know girls are different they, they show more empathy this is all about relationships um but the girls, what they do is they're actually on the phone calling customers uh, that are owed money for our clients because we deal with businesses. Sure. So they're on the phone constantly talking, negotiating, working out a payment arrangement, um, you know, sometimes getting told off. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. Um, and, you know, depending on how much is outstanding, then we go through the legal channel to actually get the debt collected. Right. That's, it, it must take a fair bit of courage to, to make some of those calls, I would say. Uh, <laughs> let's just say females, we have uh, what it takes. Persuasion. <laughs> Persuasion yeah. tactics, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I suppose in the same, you know, in the same thing that, you know, if, if you owe the money, you owe the money. Simple as that, really. Yeah, but people have different, you know, ideas of, um, you know, why they shouldn't pay or mm. why they can't pay. And, and some are definitely some unfortunate cases, absolutely. Sure. And, you know, we can hear that. We, we can, within, within, say, you know, 15 seconds of the call, we know if that person is legitimate or they're just trying to escape the debt because the world owes it to them, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And what do, you think, um, what, what do you think the reason is that most people avoid paying debts? Uh, sorry, say that again. Uh, what do you think is the, the the reason most people avoid paying debts? Oh, because you know what? Um, I tell you what, it's because the world owes it to them. Mm. Um, they just feel, and and depends on the generation. Like my generation, it's a little bit different. Like people might be stuck financially, health reasons, whatever, family breakup. But the younger they are, they just feel that you know what? I don't know it, and I don't. Well, sorry, I do owe it, but they won't admit it. But they just feel that the world owes it. They don't want to pay because they've got other priorities. Yeah. Simple as that. I find that funny, and I mean, they will tell you. Yeah, of course, I can imagine. Um, I actually find myself like, uh, I mean, I had once had credit cards, had two of them, and you know, was going through the cycle. I think everybody does, where you're literally just paying off the interest and you're, you know, you, you'd pay maybe two, $300 off it. And then the next week you need something that's worth two or $300. So you're back to the plate, you know, and it's just, it's a constant cycle. Um, yeah. And I think for, for me personally, it was because I often saw credit cards almost like free money. Like you, you almost do forget that you owe that money to somebody down the line. Do you True. know what I mean? Um, thankfully, I, you know, managed to pay them both off and I no longer have credit cards and <laughs> am debt free. And I love that fact. Um, 
but it really was. I mean, that was my thinking for quite a while. There was, especially when I was younger, it was almost like free money. It felt like it was free money because it, you know, you went to a bank and put this card in and all of a sudden, bang, there's some money for you. And it's just like, yeah. it's so easy to fall into the trap. It really is. It is. And especially if it's, um, if it's an individual that is actually owing the money. And when I say that, I mean like a consumer debt, <clears throat> yeah. excuse me, like something like for you, um, people don't realize like they use their credit card and they don't realize, well, I mean, they, they understand they've got to pay it back, but it's like, I'll pay it back next week. And then something else comes up, which much more, more priority. And they think, oh, I'll buy that too. And they don't realize it's escalating. And then all of a sudden you get whopped with high interest rates. Yeah. And then you're in a vicious circle, basically. And, and a lot of people are embarrassed about debt. So yeah. they don't want to put their hand up and say, you know what? I can't pay it. It is. It's embarrassing uh, for some. Um, I think I think I've seen the most successful users of credit cards are people that really do use it for emergency situations. Mm. You know, what I mean, like they, they say the example you've just brought up. So they see something in the shop, they will buy it with cash and pay for it up front, and then they'll yeah. still have their credit card for when their car breaks down next week, where they need that that emergency money to to pay it. You know what I mean? Like they're probably the most successful users of you know friends of mine that I have witnessed because yes. they have that control of being able to actually utilize it when they need it and also have the time to pay it off again. Where mm. with people like me that just spent it because we looked at it like free money, it always ends up in the same scenario. You, you're back in the same position each, each month, you know? Yeah. And we can't foresee what's going to happen ahead. Like, you know, no. if your car breaks down, it's like, well, I don't have the cash. Well, I put it on credit. Why not? You know, it's there. Uh, but then at the end of the day, um, you know, people have to realise that you've got to pay it back and then yeah. they don't realise the interest that oh, they the have to pay. Incredible. I mean, that's even when we take legal action. A lot of people don't realise that there's interest that's accruing. Mm. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, great, I've paid the debt. But then, oh, hang on, you've got to pay the fees. It's like, well, hang on, I didn't know about that. It's yeah. like, well, it's all there. Of you know? course. Yeah. Um, I, funny enough, I mean, I've just had three incidents with a, my car in three weeks. So trust oh, me, credit card would have came in real handy, but luckily I didn't have to do that. Thankfully, yeah. I actually had. <laughs> Tick, <laughs> great. <laughs> um, what are some of your wildest and weirdest stories? Oh, gosh, I've got so many. Um, back in the day, this was... Um, there, there, this was a funny one. We would, um, this is when the early, early days we were working for a dentist and the, the patient wasn't happy with the service. Right. So what do you think they did? They sent back the filling and the uh. tooth or whatever because it fell out or whatever and just a horrible letter saying, you know, how horrible the client was, et cetera, et cetera, with the tooth and the filling or whatever. It was disgusting. You know, right. that was one. Right. Then I had one incident um, where it was going through a court, a legal action basically, and I had the person on the phone saying if the sheriff, which is like a court officer from the court that was yeah. going to approach the, um, the house, that it was going to shoot him. And I thought, oh, my God, oh don't my do God. that. Like, you know, you just get some weird people out there. Yeah. So, you know, I had to report it because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going through their minds. Um, you know, and then you get people who are legitimately like, you know, can't pay it, but then they'll ring you every single week to say, oh, I paid, you know, a hundred dollars or I paid, you know, like a thousand and like, just, just weird. Like you get yeah, some weird, yeah. like unusual cases out there, but look, every week there's someone new. Oh, I bet. I mean, often I've, I've watched that show, um, where they basically go and it's not really debt collecting. They more go and uh, grab people's cars and that's oh, repossessing yeah, yeah. repossessing the cars yeah. and some of the, the the reactions of the people i mean it, most people it's violence you know what i mean like that's their reaction oh yeah um so i can look, imagine it does and could get very scary at times look it can and like i don't mind actually serving legal documents as well like i actually like it i know it sounds a bit weird but um and i've gone to actually serve people and actually handed them a legal document because it has to be served personally some documents sure. and i've had it thrown at me wow. like it's only a piece of paper or they don't want to accept it accept or it. they try and hide um and like this <laughs> is where you know you've just got to think out of the box yeah um 
and and just do it and that's it. And I think women are good at that. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the heaviest handed tactics that you've witnessed from uh, from uh, debt collectors? Oh, uh, well, look, you hear a lot of stories out there. I, you know, I don't get in, I don't get myself involved, but then, you know, saying that I've had people ring and say we don't want you to do the phone calls the letters the legal action we want some heavy duty stuff and I said you know what I don't do that they were very open about it and it's like you know what I'm not into that we have a license and I need to keep that license so I can stay in business so yeah. you should you just say I, th- I think you're looking for the gangsters I don't think they're in the yeah branches. it's like well, you've come to the wrong place <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's like no but they're, they're quite open no, like, you imagine, know, no, yeah. no, we don't want that tactic. We want the real thing. It's like, no, sorry. Well, I mean, you know, that's the thing. I mean, f- funny enough, I found that with, um, even when I had my credit cards, the banks themselves could be quite, you know, treacherous with wanting to collect their, their money back. And I found it funny because they'd waste time on me that I, I think it was $5,000 where you've got people that owed 50, 500, 5 million. And it's like, okay, if that's where you want to put your time and money, (laughs) go for it. I actually wonder a lot of people, I say to my husband all the time, we are quite lucky because I've never wanted to own a house. It's just something that with me, it just doesn't, I've never wanted to own a house. And so yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy renting and I'm quite happy moving around and being able to live in different cities, states, you know, whenever I feel like it. Um, yeah. And I often think and I often say to my husband, like, you look at it, some of the people around us and even just some of our friends that are millions of dollars in debt. And I just think hmm. to myself, I don't think I could sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. But- yeah, people don't realise it's a liability. It's not an asset. Yeah, yeah, Because exactly. it's not yours. Yeah. And, you, and yeah. we don't know what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Like you could be in a workplace accident and be off work for seven months. Exactly. Ten, you know? Yeah. So you just, People and don't I just realize. think to myself, having that debt and thinking about it constantly, and I would be thinking about it constantly, you know, I'm yeah. just one of those people. So I would be, I'd never sleep, basically, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, but you're in, my, you're in minority, Anthony, because there's people out there, and like I said, it depends on the, um, the age yeah. that they just think the world owes it to them. Or, you know, if my daughter has a private education and they can't afford it, you know what? So be it. They're going. It's, yeah. uh, it's just their mentality, um, how people think these days. That, I, I, you know, I, I want to believe the stress that people put themselves under with it. I really yeah. don't. Just to sort yeah. of almost keep up with the Joneses, you know? Yeah. Um, and especially even with businesses, like if you're in a business and you're dealing with other businesses, mm. um, you know, they want their goods or they want their services and they know they can't afford it, but the client will still give them the credit. They'll still give them the service because they're too scared. They don't want to lose them as a customer. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have that money. It's useless. And I think yeah. that goes back to your factor before too. I think that there, some of those people are those people that just think, well, the world owes me. Uh, poor yeah, me, yeah. look at me, poor me struggling in exactly. my business. I'm getting no staff in, but I'm still going to order that food in. And you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Like, Let's not think about a different way of doing things for this month to try and save some of that money. Let's just continue yes. doing the same thing and making more debt, which is crazy. Exactly. Really. And, um, and debt would, is definitely rising, let me oh, tell you. Oh, yeah, you can tell, definitely. And um, what would your advice be if you have debt and you can't pay it? What would what to do? Okay, yeah, look, great question. And I really hope people would listen in to this. Um, if there's a debt problem that you've got a debt problem, whether you're in business or whether you're an individual that has debt, you really need to basically own it, contact the people who are chasing you and make some sort of payment arrangement. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's frequent, because that will lower your interest as well if interest is being charged. So whatever it is, just pay it off. And what I suggest is put it in writing, not verbal, because verbal can go astray. Yeah. Put it in writing and say, this is what I'd like to offer you. This is when I'm going to start. Please advise straight yeah. away. Don't muck around with it. There's no point because if you're on the phone, things can go missing, information can be change but if it's in writing and the most important thing is do it like a lot of people verbalize but don't do it so if i was them i would say here it is and here's my first payment as well yeah, yeah. so then they'll think wow 
you know. This person's serious about what they're you offering. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I remember when I was younger and there'd be times I wouldn't be able to afford my phone bill and that'd be the first thing I'd do is actually ring them and say, can I pay half this week and pay half next week? Yeah. And they're always so completely fine with that. You know what I mean? Mm. I think a lot of people fear the unknown and, it's, and it is a much better way of facing it contacting them letting them know your situation because majority of businesses these days are set up for stuff like that and they, they you know they'll allow you to pay it off you know it's as long absolutely. as they're getting their money back that's all they care about they don't care yeah. when they're going to get it yeah absolutely and you know and unfortunately and i say this debt collectors and even myself i'm a debt collector but if you ignore me and we have tried to reach out to contact you and and correspond to you and you make promises and broken promises after promises well you know what i'm sorry i and you know like you see those tv shows that say oh they've taken my house away and they've done this you know it's taken a long time to get to that stage yeah. it's not it, that doesn't happen overnight and people exactly. don't realize that but don't promise something to a debt collector and not do it because yeah. then we'll think you know what you can't be bothered so why should i sit here and wait that's where we need to move forward well, and I mean, I think when, that's where most people yeah. go wrong is that they don't realise that once it gets to debt collection stage, it's serious. You know what I mean? Like that's where you've, you haven't done your part of the job and it's time that someone else is going to take over and do the job properly, you know? Exactly. Yeah, because, you know, my clients already tried. They've yeah. already tried to collect it and they've been ignored or maybe they've got like a little bit of payment. But when they come to us, come to us we can't sit and wait. We need to move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, no, that's that's when, and that's, you know. Tune in each week for Anne's Talk to learn about real life stories, celebrities and everything in between. Um, how do you handle your own debts and finances? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I do pay on time. Um, personally, I don't like paying way in advance. Yeah. I don't agree with that because I think, you know, I do pay before the due date. And, and, you know, like we've all been stuck in some time of our life, you know, so, and I've done exactly the same thing. I've rung up and said, hey, can we work out something? Sure. But generally I pay before the due date. Because in, in reality, having a little bit of debt is actually good for your, um, your, what's it called? Your um, credit rating. Credit, yeah. Isn't yeah. that correct? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, if you can't just sort of walk around debt free and expect to have a credit rating because you've never had any credit to have a rating on. Yeah. Look, I think everyone pretty much eventually in their life will have some sort of debt. Hmm. Um, so as long as you pay it, because then if you don't, then you may get up against the credit people. And then when you do want some credit, you won't get it. Yeah. Because, yeah. because of you know, you're not paying and, and being defaulted as well. So mm. it's really important to make sure you do pay it. And eventually, I think in some lifetime, everyone will have some sort of debt. Yeah. I don't think you can escape it. No. You know, exactly. whether it's credit card or, you know, a car loan, it doesn't have to be a house or something huge. But I think eventually there will be something. Well, especially these days, because you've now got afterpay, which is just taking over the world really um and yeah. i've you know i know even from i mean i've seen reports how it is getting out of hand that there's a lot of younger girls now going into huge debt and and getting in such trouble with um afterpay um and i even know just with friends of mine some of them have got themselves into situations and you know they, they sort of talk to me and almost laugh about it but i think to myself you're digging yourself into a big gaping hole there be very yeah. careful. I, I always warn them, you know what I mean? Like you need to be warned because again, it's not free money. It's not just this thing that you can constantly keep doing when you don't have the funds in the future to then pay it back, you know? Yeah, it is. It's quite sad actually because people just don't realise that. Yeah. And, and it's I, too late when they do. I think too that society's changed because now we are so, we've just got to have things. You know what I mean? Like, and we're not willing to wait for things or save exactly. for things. We've got to have those things now, you know. Like, I want it now. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it really is. And, and and, but let's face it, everything's available now. If well, you want is. something, regardless. It is. But I think the Whether beauty in, in working card. for something, you know, and just paying it off. And I mean, I mean, we've, we're the generation of lay-by. <laughs> we, we were taught how to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. It depends on the 
the age as well mm. because you know our gender it's like you know what it's okay we can we can wait for it or I'll wait till I get the money or whatever. But the younger crowd, it's like, no, I want it now. And let's face it, society is making it available to yeah. you because it's on internet, afterpay, credit cards. You want a loan? Sure, here's a loan. You know, yeah. even though they've been a little bit more careful with loans, um, but it's all there for you on a silver platter. Yeah, it's crazy. When does debt recovery go too far, do you think? When does it go too far? Um, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I don't uh, know if it happens. I mean, we've seen the TV shows in America where, you know, it does get very heavy handed and it's almost like, you know, um, fear tactics and stuff like that. Does that sort of stuff happen in Australia? Look, you know what? Um, I, I don't know about how, when it goes too far because it comes down to the point where if you're not going to cooperate, you're not going to pay the debt back or even partly pay it, Let's face it, I'm going to go as far as I can yeah. to collect it. So, for instance, if I'm dealing with an individual and I know where that person works and you're defaulting your payments that you've arranged with me, then I'll take you right through to getting your um, money taken away from you from your employer. Yeah, Simple. Yeah. Um, and then you, and I then can't get emotionally a, attached. Yeah. And I suppose that's where sheriffs and police and everybody else would get involved Correct. too. Yeah. Yeah. We don't take those actions just for the fun of it. Mm. We're taking these actions, like whether we're getting the sheriff there, whether we're going to close the company down, whether we're going to take money away from someone's wages. We're doing that because people are not cooperating with us or not paying or repaying the debt back. That's why mm. we're going down that way. Mm. I mean, we wouldn't suggest to our clients to go that way if we didn't think it was worth it. But we definitely will go there, definitely, yeah. without a doubt. So beware. There's no point. <laughs> What's that? So beware, everyone. <laughs> Pay your well, debts. Well, <laughs> you know, like if there was an interest-free loan out there, we'd be all lining up for it, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. There's no such thing. No, it doesn't matter is... if they say 12 months interest-free, 20 months interest-free. Trust me, the nah. interest is coming. <laughs> exactly. It we'll is. Yeah. Always and you know read that little writing at the bottom. Thank you. I was just about to say, that's where people go wrong. They don't read the fine print. They don't understand what they're getting themselves into because they just see those shiny objects and think, oh, I want it. Yeah, yeah. And they don't go past, well, what's behind there? You know, afterpay, um, what's behind that? Credit cards, what's behind that? It's all the same. It, you know, people just need to learn to be a little bit more aware. Mm. Um, and, you know, if they're in debt, just put your hand up. That's all there is. It's all about communication. It's about relationships. You know, we're not here to be the big bullies. We're here to help people. It's relationships. It's mm. we're on the fence. We're trying to help the client and we're also trying to help the debtor. You know, we get, you know what, sometimes we get, it's actually, it's quite funny. Sometimes we get a lot of debtors that send thank you notes to us saying, oh, you guys have been so nice. Um, you know, I've been paying this off for like eight years or whatever. And I want to thank you for being so flexible, blah, blah, blah. You oh, know, there's absolutely. some generally good people out there. Yeah. But then you get the dodgers as well. Yeah. See, I've always, I've said to my husband recently, because I mean, he had no debt either. And I said, look, you need, you do need a little bit of debt to have the credit rating thing. I sort of said to him, I said, the best thing to do is to look at debt is it's got to, you, you can only have as much debt as you could afford to lose. And that's how I look at debt. So, uh, you know what I mean? Like to me, I know that with a two or $3,000 debt, that would be easy for me to pay back within, a, you know, a month or something because I could pay yeah, a little sure. bit off if things were really desperate, a, couple, a little, say $200 off a week over the, the period of a month or two months, it's gone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you're making a lot more money, then of course it can be a higher debt, but you, it's got to be money that you are willing to lose. Because yeah. in reality, yeah. you are losing it. You're spending it there and then. As soon as you put that card on that tap machine or whatever you're doing, you're, put, <laughs> you're, you're spending that money. It's gone. So you've got yeah. to be prepared in those next few months to know that that money is not going to be there, whether it be $200 exactly. a week or the, the whole amount in one week. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to get used to knowing that you've used it. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And it's funny you just said that about tapping. Like, I don't know about you, but like even when you, people's mindset have changed over the years because I know debt collection has changed. Like, you know, 
30 years ago, I'd be saying pay up or else. But yeah. now you can't do that. But when you go to the shop even, like my card, I don't want to use my credit card, so to speak. So yeah. I want to put it through the machine. But they instantly say, oh, they don't even ask you. They just tap it. So yeah. don't you dare tap it. I don't want it tapped because my money's there. Just use it. But they yeah, quickly yeah. want to tap it so it goes to the credit and whatever. It's like I don't want it. So no, it's crazy. And you, I was only actually watching a report this morning. Supposedly that's the way of the world. It's going directly that way. So basically yeah. everything will be tap and go. Actually, there's even saying that we won't even have cards soon. It'll just be oh. done through our phones, which scares well, it's me. Even you know? watches as well. Yeah. Like, you know, I know there's watches that you just, um, I don't know what you do, but you can just tap it. It's like, yeah, it's I don't want to tap it. So you can yeah. imagine I don't that it will only get worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not going to get any better it really no. i can't foresee it. i've been in the industry for over 35 years and i can tell you it's not getting any better no definitely not i think it's going to get it's getting worse to be honest i just did a i just did an interview not long ago and it's definitely rising like the yeah. stats are there oh definitely now you can see it happening all around the world it's it's my husband watches it like a hawk he's he's in no, does he? at the moment. yeah <laughs> He really is. So tell us also just about your company itself. So people okay. can contact you and. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, basically we're an all female team and we offer clients um, different um, debt recovery strategies to collect their accounts. So, but we deal with businesses. Yeah. So um, any businesses out there that have actually got accounts uh, that supply credit, we can help them from basically whether they want to do it themselves or they can come to us and we'll do it for them. So we've got different packages available that clients can come to us and we can actually solve their problems. Um, debt collection is not something you buy off the shelf. So we have a little discussion, we have a consult, and then I would advise the client what the best thing for them. And, and the good news is that um, even though they might be waiting for this account to be collected, as soon as it comes to us, we turn it around within 48 hours. Wow. That's how quick we work. So they need money, they need cash. This is, this is where it's all going to happen very That's quickly. Amazing. Yeah, and we also get a success rate. It's not 100%. A lot of people think, oh, wow, you know, we'll come to you and you'll get it. It's about 72% success rate. Yeah. And that depends on how old it is, um, individual business. There's a lot of, you know, things that we need to look at as in aspects. But it's definitely better than not and thinking it's going to come because it won't come. Sure. And how can um, listeners contact you if they need your help? They can call us on our office number, which is, do you want me to give that to yes, you? Yes, please. Yeah. It's uh, 02 for Sydney, 9790. Sorry, nine seven nine zero six eight double seven, or you can check out our website on www.acsdebtcollection.com.au. And are you nationwide or just Sydney based? We're based in Sydney, but we can cover the whole of Australia and overseas if we need to. Fantastic. But my specialty is Australia. Yeah, that's brilliant. I really, really appreciate your time, Sonia. Thank you so much for having a chat with us. Thank and you, I hope Anthony. to talk to you again soon. Yes, please. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ants Talk. It's like Oprah, but not.